Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is video editorial for the problem chess and knight moves taken from Code Chef. So, the question is: There is some guy, Carol, guy or girl, I do not know, or uh, Carol, who is playing chess, I guess. And basically, the question is: You are given two points on the chess board. Uh, one is the starting point, and one is the target point. So, uh, there is a knight. On the chessboard, on the starting point, and you have to find the minimum number of moves to reach the target point by the knight. And this is what we have to print. So this is, as you can see, a regular chessboard. So the columns are numbered from one to eight, and the rows are numbered from A to H. So this is an H uh, sorry eight cross eight uh, eight cross eight chessboard. Now the, there are two queries. In first qu uh, query, the starting point is A one, and terminating point or target point is B one. So knight is here, and this is your target point. So the answer is three. In three moves, you can reach from starting point to target point. Before continuing to this lecture or this editorial i would highly advise you to watch those lectures uh, i i have already explained how this problem these kind of problem can be solved using bfs on 2d grid we are going to apply bfs on 2d grid so it it would be better if you have studied how we can apply bfs on 2d grid i have already explained the the application of bfs on 2d grid and also the application of DFS on 2D grid. I have explained many other things or uh, how these algorithms can be applied on 2D grid. So, if you haven't watched those videos, go to a graph theory playlist part one and then watch those lectures first because I'm going to explain, I'm going to use those things without explaining those things here because I have already explained those things in the in those lectures so make sure you have watched those lectures so if your starting point is a1 and terminating point or target point is b1 uh, you can reach from starting point to terminating point in three moves uh, the possible moves are this from here you can go here and then from here in another move you can go here and from here in another move you can reach the target point so in total you are making three moves and you are able to reach target point and this is the minimum number of moves that are required by you and uh, for the second test case uh, you can visualize this test case yourself the important thing is the input is given in the form of uh, you can read it in form of character so we will be reading them as character and be converting them into integers so uh, row and column will be converting uh, will be taking the coordinates of the cells as integers so we won't be considering them as a1 or a3 and so on we'll be considering a as 1 and 2 and 3 even though this is given in the input as form of a b c d we'll be converting this into uh, 1 2 3 4 so a will be representing 1 b will be representing 2 and so on till a h which will be representing 8 so as explained in the previous lecture uh, if a knight is at position x y there are eight possibilities knight can move to so from here uh, knight can go here from here knight can also go here 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 so these are the cell uh, a knight can cover if it is at certain position x y so there are eight possibilities for the knight to move now this is if this cell is at coordinate x y then the coordinate of this would be x minus 2 y plus 1 i have already explained these things in bfs uh, on 2 degree lecture and night moves lecture so make sure you have watched those lectures from graph theory part 1 playlist now for this we have to create the direction array as we always do for dfs or bfs so this would be the direction array again already explained so not going to explain it here so if i show you the code let me show you the input first so this is the input and this is the output the input is given in the form of character so what we are going to do we are going to read them as character and i'll be 
yep this should be visible now uh, x y would represent the starting point uh, starting cell coordinate and target x target y uh, here it is target x target y would represent the of course the target coordinates now dx and dy are the direction array as explained in those lectures this is for visited uh, uh, this is the visited array and this is of course the uh, this would keep the distance of each cell from the target so what we are doing here uh, there are q queries so for each query we have two characters a and b because uh, this i'll be reading this coordinate i'll be reading as character so first a would be reading a uh, if i'm reading this coordinate of target point so a would contain b and b would contain one so uh, since i am reading in a and b so uh, first of all what i am doing initializing all of the visited uh, cells to be zero and the, uh, since the cell is of size 8 cross 8 so that is why uh, i am initializing all of the cells in is 8 cross 8 uh, to degree to be zero which indicates that none of the cells are visited yet so reading a b the basically the coordinate of the source so source x would be get x and get x is basically a function which will convert the character input to integer input basically uh, the x coordinate is always given as character right uh, this the the row number is always uh, always given in characters so this get x function is basically converting that to integer so x would be get x of a because this is the uh, row number and b is actually a uh, column number and it is in integer so uh, since i am reading it as in so to convert it into integer i'll be simply uh, removing a character zero from it so basically this would be uh, removing a sky value from the sky value of uh, as uh, this would be re removing a sky value of zero from a sky value of whatever the input is so if if the input is one so a sky value of one minus a sky value of zero since these are consecutive so it would result into one and if b was two so it would result into b and uh, i mean two and so on so basically reading these two row and columns as character and then converting them into integer now get uh, get x if i represent uh, if i explain you if the input is say a so a minus a would result into zero zero plus one one so basically first row and since a represents the first row so that is okay now if the input is b character is b so it represents second row right so b minus a would result into one one plus one two so this is basically converts the input character to integer so if input character is e so it should return six i guess one two three four five so sorry five so basically you can uh, write if else condition here so if the input is e it should return five because e means fifth row similarly reading for target x y so a and b target x would be get x a and target y would be b minus zero now uh, calling bfs on x y which is source x source y starting from source x y coordinates this is the standard bfs nothing special here we are creating a queue since in each uh, uh, in queue we are going to store uh, what we call a pair or basically x y coordinate that is why in q we are going uh, we are saying that we are going to store a pair standard dfs uh, sorry bfs procedure we initialize the source uh, distance of source x y as zero we uh, we mark the source cell to be visited and then insert the source coordinate into the queue if x and y are already target x target y that means you don't have to make any move you are already on the target cell and that is why you would return the basically basically the distance or you can simply return zero from here otherwise while queue is not empty each time you are taking out the current uh, x and current y basically the front of q and then you are also removing it then there are eight different direction to move and that is why we are running a loop eight times uh, this would be the new coordinates 
if current x current y it represents the current cell of of the night then from there you can move to current x plus dx of i and current y plus df of or uh, df or uh, dx sorry dy of i you can move to this cell if this is valid and we are checking by is valid function uh, the significance and the uses of is valid function i have already explained in those lectures so uh, of course if you have watched those lectures you already know now since x cannot be i'm using one base index system so x cannot be below zero or x cannot go beyond eight because there are eight rows similarly for columns uh, column number cannot be uh, below one or it cannot go beyond eight if any of these condition uh, is true that means we are going into the wrong cell that is why we return false if the the cell on which we want to step is already visited we will return false otherwise if none of these condition is true that means the cell you want to step on is actually valid so this would return true so if the new cell you want to step on is actually valid that means we can step on that cell so we will be creating new x new y new x new y are current x plus dx of i and current y plus dy of i now we will be setting the distance of a new cell to be distance of current cell plus one we uh, will be marking the new cell to be visited and also inserting the new cell into uh, q if the new cell is actually the target x and target y we, we are going to return the distance of new cell and that is all that is all that we have to do and as you can see we have got AC on this so if you are having any trouble understanding this uh, although you should not have because this is the standard BFS uh, procedure this is the standard BFS algorithm that we have already seen we have already solved so many problems I guess on BFS including the BFS on normal graph we have solved problems on graph using BFS. We have solved uh, problems on 2D grid. I guess, I guess we have solved one or two problems using BFS on 2D grid. If not, we are going to solve uh, uh, some problems because I have some problems in mind for BFS on 2D grid. So if you have any problems regarding this, you can ask on the article that I've created uh, for this course and the link of the article I will be posting in the description. So thank you guys for watching and till the next, uh, next video drops, keep coding. Thank you.